Howdy folks and welcome to Tiny Tent Show episode number seven, where once again we will gather up together apart and help keep the spirit of the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua Tent alive. Tonight we're going to we're going to bring you some artists that you're used to seeing up on the big top stage, but rather than seeing them under canvas, we're going to track them down in their own element and they will share a song with you and maybe a story or two even. It is spring here. As I look out the window of my little room over the garage, I can see dandelions, but it's been a slow spring. We've been stoking the wood stove regularly, even as the wrens are building their nests. Nonetheless, we hold out hope that soon we will see blossoms. And uh, what better way to start tonight's show with, uh, than with a song about a blossom, in particular, a song called Blackberry Blossom, performed on fiddle by Nori Schwensfire and banjoed, if I may coin the term, by Harrison Oak. Harrison Oak and Nori Schwensfire. Well, folks, earlier this year on this very show, world-class musician Randy Sabine embarked on a 30-day music tour of his house. And then the tour got extended. Now, the last time we checked in on him, Randy was holding up real well. It was clear that even in these tough times, his music sustains him. And he always gives me a real boost and, and our audience a real boost. So, so let's check in on him now, see how things are going. Oh, 
welcome to the kitchen. Sorry I'm late. It's, uh, you've already helped yourself to the mimosas, I see. And today's special, today's special is, um, I guess it's aged oatmeal. If you want it heated up, I guess you could, could do that for you. You know, play some music for you. Day, alone in my house, um, you you want to go over there and uh, check on Randy? I mean, I wouldn't go in the house. Just crack a window, maybe maybe poke him with a stick. Well, we're clearly all dealing with these difficult times in our own way. Ed Willett, for instance, has taken to playing in the streets. Although only a city kid from LA would call a dirt road a street. Hey everybody, Ed Willett here. As you can see, I'm on the road again. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about a real problem that we have in High Bridge, Wisconsin, where I live, and that's traffic. The traffic is unbearable. And I just don't know what to do with it. I, I moved from Los Angeles just to get away from traffic, but it's every bit as bad here. Every bit. Well, I left High Bridge about 5 o'clock. It took me 15 minutes to go three blocks. Just in time to wait in line with the freeway looking like a parking lot. I said, damn, this traffic jam. <laughs> How I hate to be late, it hurts my motor to go so slow. Time to get home, my stuff will be cold. Well, damn this traffic jam. Damn. Damn. Every bit is bad. Every bit is bad. Well, I almost had a heart attack. I was looking in my rearview mirror when I saw myself. The next car back, I was looking in my rearview mirror when I'm about to have a heart attack. I said, damn, this traffic jam. How I hate to be late. Hurts my motor to go so slow. Time to get home, my supper be cold. Well, damn, this traffic jam. Damn. Oh, no. Not another hay wagon. No, no, turn. Ah, turn, turn. Now when I die, I don't want no coffin. I thought about it all too often. Just strap me in behind the wheel and bury me with my automobile. Damn, this traffic jam. How I hate to be late. It hurts my motor to go so slow. Time I get home, my supper be cold. Well, damn. This traffic jam. Damn. I'm moving now, though. I'm really moving now. Oh, no. No, not a school bus. Please, not a school bus. Oh, no. The red lights, the blinking red lights. Oh, no. Well, I used to think that I was cool running around on fossil fuel. And then I found what I was doing was driving down the road to ruin. Hey, get out of the way! It would appear that Ed has taken his hands off the metaphorical wheel. Maybe he can hitch a hay wagon ride over to Randy's and they can work it out together. Our next guest is a three-time Grammy winner. Born on the Stockbridge Muncie Reservation in northern Wisconsin, he's a singer-songwriter, he's a guitarist, he's a flute player, uh, and he's a painter of Mohican heritage. He is a longtime friend of the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua, and we are so thrilled to be visited now by Bill Miller. Hey guys, thanks for supporting Big Top Chautauqua and this little tiny concert thing. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Bill Miller. I've played uh, Big Top many times over the years. Love it. This is a song I wrote last year. It's called 
called uh, Stone Tree. It's going on my next record. Bill Miller. You know, Ed Willett once told me that performing on stage beside Bill Miller was like performing in the eye of a hurricane. Everything feels serene, but you know that at any moment, Bill can reach out and just snag a little piece of that hurricane and drop it in a song. We're glad to have him. You know, when musicians come off the road, they don't stop practicing. And they don't call it practicing. They call it woodshedding. And as you're about to see in this next clip, ours is a family of woodshedders. Howdy, folks. I was uh, working up in my little room over the garage yesterday when I heard the most beautiful sound. And it was a rhythm, really. And rhythm always catches my attention because I'm not very good at rhythm. Anybody who's played music with me knows that. I have two rhythms and we, we must not depart from them or I get very lost and I have a hard time counting. But I was working away in that little room with the, the windows were open, I could hear the birds of spring. And then I started to hear this rhythm, chunk, chunk, chunk. And you know what it was? It was the most beautiful sound of all. It was the sound of a teenager chunking firewood. Chunking it from the trailer or chucking it. I had already chunked it. My mother-in-law did a bunch of chunking for us, by the way. Thank you. You, you don't want to mess with my mother-in-law. I certainly don't. But it was the sound of the teenager chucking firewood from the trailer into the little woodshed where I'm sitting right now. 
And then there was a quieter sound, a quieter rhythm, a, still the, the chonk, chonk, tunk, tunk sound of wood, but it was a wo of wood being stacked. That too is a beautiful sound when created by a teenager. So I reveled in that sound, and I'm reveling right here now because I see that she's added another row. <clears throat> and I hope by the time we burn this firewood next winter, we'll be getting ready to get together again. In the meantime, I'm, I'm settling for the happiness and the joys that are available in the present. And one is a beautiful day like this, the sound of birds, and also the joy of knowing that when this particular song is over, there's an, there's another one waiting to be played, a whole new trailer full of sound. See you later, folks, and thank you to my daughter. Let's switch back to music now, in this case a collaboration between two musicians, a vocalist and a keyboard player. The keyboard player is uh, nowhere to be seen in this collaboration, but he is to be heard. It's Severin Bainan playing and Jack Gunderson singing in his own backyard. Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, this is Jack Gunderson. And uh, for this week's contribution in the Tiny Tent Show, I wanted to do a song off of the album, Nice and Easy, that Severin Bainan and I did together a few years back. And um, of course, he's in LA right now, so that makes the challenge a little bit more. So I'm going to, uh, Luckily, I have a piano-only track of this tune, and uh, so I'm just going to do it like that. Hope you enjoy it. Here we go. <laughs> Let's take it nice and easy. It's gonna be so easy for us to fall in love. <laughs> hey, baby, what's your hurry? Relax, don't you worry. We're gonna fall in love. We That's safe to say, but let's take all the stops along the way. The problem now, of course, is to simply hold our horses. To rush would be a crime, cause Nice and easy does it every time. And here's the piano solo by Severin Bainan. And a quick little view around the place here. You can see Linda working in the garden over there. That's safe to say, but let's make all the stops along the way. <laughs> the problem now, of course, is to simply hold our horses. To rush would be a crime, cause Nice and easy does it, nice and easy does it, nice and easy does it every time. Well, I said earlier that spring is moving slowly around these parts, but I would have to say that based on those daffodils 
Jack's beret and that shirt, spring is moving right along at, at the Gunderson place. Summer cannot be far behind. We move on now to Jane Allison and Mary Lou Williams. If the stars were mine, I'd give them all you. I'd pluck them down right from the sky, leave it only blue. I would never let the sun forget to shine up on your face. So when others would have rain clouds, you'd have only sunny days. If the stars were mine, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd put the stars all in a jar and give them all to you. the birds were mine, I'd tell them when to sing. I'd make them sing a sonnet when your telephone would ring. I would put them there inside the square whenever you went out. So there'd always be sweet music whenever you walked by. If the birds were mine, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd teach the birds such lovely words, make them sing for you. If the world was mine, I'd paint it gold and green. I'd make the oceans orange for a brilliant color scheme. I would color all the mountains, leave the sky forever blue. So the world would be a painting, and I'd live inside with you. If the world was mine, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd wrap the world in ribbons, and I'd give it all to you. I teach the birds such lovely words, make them sing for you. I put those stars all in a jar. Give them more to you. Thank you, Jane and Mary Lou. Our next performer is Danielle Diamond. You've seen her on the big top stage many, many times, under the lights and with the beautiful big sound system. Tonight, it's just Danielle, her keyboard, and a strong, strong song. And what more do we need? There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel humming. You don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord. Yeah. Just 
to save his own Have pity on those Whose chances are thinner Cause there's no hiding place From the kingdom's throne So people get ready There's a train to come in You don't need no baggage Just get on board You just thank the Lord. You don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. You don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. Danielle Diamond, everyone, singing in power. <laughs> you know, not every member of the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua family is a born and bred cheesehead. As Exhibit A, I present Stevie Mateer, who came from a place not near here, and he will explain about that in a song delivered with the assistance of Andy Noyes, who accompanies Stevie on the bazooki. I hope you're all keeping well and staying safe. My partner in crime, Andy Noyes, come up with our day, and we put a wee thing together for you all. It's a wee song about the county that I grew up in. Near the Banbridge town in the county down in an evening in July. Down alone and sweet, came a girl so neat that I smiled when she passed me by. She looked so bright with the leopard's light as the step of a springtime here. Why the coaxing yelp, I had to shake myself to make sure I was really there. From Scrabble Hill to Listen to and from Cumber to Newry Town. There's a girl so neat, there's a town so sweet, she's a flower of the county down. As she onward sped, well, I shook my head and says I to a passerby. There's a maid so sweet with the quick and feet, and I waited for his reply. Well, he smiled at me, and he said, says he, that's a gem of all Ireland's crown. That's a Rosie McCann from the banks of the bank, she's a flower of the county down. From Scrabble Hill to Listen to Dill, and from Cumber to Newry Town. There's a girl so neat, there's a town so sweet, she's a flower of the county down. Way and along came the lovely flower. With the charming sight, sure my heart took flight like a lark in the midday hour. She deny as lush as a clock and thrush, and such light in her nut brown hair. But the words I had, and my mouth went mad, and I stood with my heart all square. From Scrabble Hill to Miss the Dill, and from Cumber to Newry Town. There's the girl so neat, there's a town so sweet, she's the flower of the county down. Well, I traveled a bit, but I never was hit since my roving career began. Fair and square, I surrendered there to the charms of young Rosie McCann. Had a heart to let, but lieutenant yet that I meet within shawl or gown. But in she went, sure I asked no rent from the flower in the county down. From Scrabble Hill to List of Dill, and from Comfort to Newry Town. There's a girl so neat, there's a town so sweet, she's the flower in the county down. Surely there, and I'll dress in my Sunday clothes. 
with my shoes shone bright and my hot cock right for a smile from the nut brown gold. No pipe I'll smoke, no horse I'll yoke, don't be fly with roast corn brown. No my high smile and laugh on my old car side, since the star in the county down. From Scrabble Hill to Lisbeth Dill, and from Cumber to New York Town. There's my hair so weak, that's the tan so sweet, she's the flower in the county down. From Scrabble Hill to Lisbeth Dill, and from Cumber to New York Town. There's a dance so sweet, she's a flower in the county down. From Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay, it's the tall way to dog and town. Who oh, made I see that the sweet Colleen? That I made in the county down. Stevie Mateer of County Down, Northern Ireland. <laughs> I don't know if you were doing what I was doing, but I was peeking through the window of that shed there, and uh, somebody's a pretty good pool player. <laughs> well, now I'm going to drop in and visit with our, our dear friend Tom Mitchell, a long-standing member of the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua. Today, I would just ask you to tell me a couple of stories about the old days in the tent. And you sent me a list of things, and the very first one I want to ask you about, but I don't know if we're going to even be able to tell it. Because you said, ask me about the couple who disappeared into the woods. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> in, when the tent up, went up originally, there was, uh, there was no spirit cottage. We parked our cars along... Well, if, if, if you're standing on stage and looking out at the audience, it would be the left. That's where the woods are. It was all woods. There was no parking lot. It was a solid wall of popple and thimbleberry. And, and, uh, and uh, there was a small entry into the woods that was a, a cross-country ski trail. But it was kind of swampy in there. So there, we parked our cars along there. And and uh, one night the flaps were up, and we were—I don't know what show we were doing, but it was at a very tender moment, kind of quiet. And all of a sudden, from the stage now, looking down left on the side there, right by the right by the edge of the tent, we heard this woman's voice yell very loudly, "You s o b!" And she got up and ran out of the tent into that trail and in on into the woods <laughs> everything stopped dead you know <laughs> and then the guy that she was sitting next to he got up and he just walked out there and he went down that trail into the woods and we never saw him again they never came back out they're still in there well this, really you know i'll keep it short all right. old last night the bonfire went on all night and yeah. we stayed up till dawn and had breakfast the very first hole last night, we all trooped down to Maggie's. She opened up the restaurant. We ate down there. After that, breakfast was served in the chalet. But one night, there was this great bonfire and a lot of wonderful people there. And after, uh, after bar time, two in the morning, a couple of guys came up. And they started hanging around the fire. And uh, one of the guys was sidled up to and started paying unwanted attention to a person that was very inappropriate for him to be doing. And uh, I went over to Jerry and I said, cause he kind of, that guy drifted away. And I said, Jerry, did you see that guy talking to so-and-so? And he said, yeah, yeah, we've been keeping an eye on him. I said, oh, oh here he comes again. He's going over there. <laughs> and so uh, Jerry saw the guy's friend close by and he motioned his friend over and he said to this guy's friend uh we'll give you two choices you can either leave in your own car or we'll call the ambulance <laughs> we won't even call the sheriff <laughs> we'll just call the ambulance that's a great that's a and great that guy took off and he ran over to his friend and he went 
and they ran down to their car and jumped in and uh, burned gravel all the way out. Okay. That reminds me of an old guy I grew up next to. I grew up in some fairly roughneck country, and this is, you know, we're talking now 35 years ago. And uh, there was a, let's just call him a roughneck fella, neighbor of mine that I yeah. knew in my life. Like to hunt and shoot, and he got he owned some land next to a rich fella. I got to keep all the details out because folks, <laughs> and yeah, the, right. <laughs> the rich fella built a very big fancy house on the land, and there came a time when the, the old timer, the roughneck who'd been there forever, just needed to get on the rich guy's land for a very simple and innocuous errand. It was the kind of thing where you went to your neighbor, you said, "I just need to go on there." And you would say, of course, I give you permission. And you go on, you do what you got to do, and you leave. Well, the rich right, guy right. from the big city, and he said, no, you're not allowed on my property. He made a big scene about it. And the old guy, he was wearing the overalls and everything, and he had his thumbs behind <laughs> the straps. And after the rich guys told him several times he couldn't go on his property, the old guy just looked at him and said, well, I hope you don't treat everybody this way. And the rich guy said, why is that? And the old guy said, because who's going to help you rebuild after the fire? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you reminded me of that. Well, let's close with, um, you had put down a note here, meeting Doc Watson or parking cars for Myron Florin. Maybe choose one. Well, um, Doc Watson came with his, um, you know, his dual guitar player. His son Merle was you know, long dead, mm -hmm. and Doc was working with another young guy. So it was just the two of them. And Warren told me that, you know, we were going to open for Doc Watson, the BCO. But Warren told me that in Doc's writer, he said he, he didn't want a, a drum set playing in the first opening set. So Warren said, I don't know, you know, I don't know if you can play or I don't know what you, you know, we'll, uh, we'll ask Doc. So Doc came and, you know, he got out of the car and he's a big guy. And we shook, all shook hands with him and greeted him. And, and then Warren said, well, Doc, this is our drummer, Tom Mitchell. And, uh, you know, we don't quite know what to do about the, what, what you said in your rider. And Doc said, oh, he said, oh. I don't want you to misunderstand. You know, I like the drums a lot. I really like the drums. But, but you know, when we're just two guys and two guitars, and when a band opens up for us, it's bigger and has a bigger sound. It it kind of makes us uh, sound a little puny when we come on. <laughs> and we're all going like, "Oh yeah, Doc Watson sounds puny." Right. So, so he said, "Ax." He said, "You know, it's it's okay. It's okay with me." But that's fine. And I and I, I said to him, Well, Doc, then I won't play my 42 inch bass drum. <laughs> and he, you know, I could tell he's looking down and I could tell he was calculating the size, visualizing it in his mind. And he just got this slow smile on his face and he said, Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love this kind of stuff. This is uh, you know one little anecdote at a time and all of a sudden you wake up and they become history and um yeah. you know, when those things happen it's just something that happened in the course of another day at the tent but all right. the years later all of a sudden it's burnished you know and it's this little yeah. nugget of history so maybe next time we talk about this stuff we'll get to parking cars for myron floor oh yeah all right tom thanks thank a lot michael thank nice. i like visiting with tom I'm going to let him do some music now in the company of three of his longtime friends, Ed Willett, Philip Anich, and Severin Bainan. I think I'll just let Philip set the scene. The song my brother John turned me on to is a recording by Bob Dylan. John said, this is the best blues song you're ever going to hear, and I like it.
nobody can sing the blues like Blind Willie McDowell. Well, I heard a hoot owl singing. They were taken down the tent. The stars. Thank you, fellas. And now we turn to a fresh generation as we welcome Yasmin, accompanied by international touring artist Reiner, who recorded his drum tracks in Cuba, which is a, a long ways from Bayfield County. They will be performing an original Yasmin composition called You Were Mine.
Yasmin and Reiner, everybody. Reiner checking in from Cuba. The big top is a big tent. Well, we're going to wrap things up now with what is rapidly becoming one of the more popular segments on Tiny Tent Show, and that is the BCO flashback, in which we go back in the vaults and pull out a performance by the Blue Canvas Orchestra from times past. Tonight we're going to hear the song Isle, Wisconsin, written by Warren Nelson, this song was part of 30th Star, which was a production put together to celebrate the sesquicentennial of the state, and the images you see were compiled by Betty Ferris. Wisconsin is an island, the long sheet Lake Michigan, the big blue bowl superior, the sweet St. Croix and the Mississippi to border the west. And even the bottom line is a sea of grass. Isle, Wisconsin, please remember. On the big blue ball, Superior, down the long green sheet, Lake Michigan, from the beautiful Isle, Wisconsin, we said, please remember. In the right wing, all the canvas we raised and we sang to the hall in the deck morning light. Oh, up aloft high, this yard must go. And when it's up, we'll leave it so. We will run before the wind. We'll walk in to Sheboygan by the docks of Manitowoc and the two rivers beach. And if we can give her all the sheet and the wind stays right, we'll make old Sturgeon Day tonight on the day. The upper lake, Superior City, we watch that harbor roll in the grain trade. The ore from Wasabi on the steep ships with all the old schooners in tow. Out long in the night, show the devil's island light. A night black as a Bible in the Apostle of Highlands. Up come the wind, we turn to run in to the lee of the long base you warm again on the big blue ball, Superior. Down the long green sheet lake Michigan From the beautiful Isle, Wisconsin We sail, please remember On the western side, on the wide great river In the steamboating paddle wheeling, dealing days We were rafting and towing, and showboat showing And loading freight and passengers by old We'd go steaming by, next bend in the river in the pilot time for this witchery in that mighty Mississippi. One slip and it's the old folks' last trip. Here's Granddad's Bluff, from where you can see three states all around, and you can see me on the levee at the cross. 
that's our tiny tent show for tonight we sure do thank you for taking the time to tune in and we also want to especially thank our sponsors kim ogle and ruth getz star north up in cornucopia brownstone pharmacy in washburn wisconsin quilts on the wall design barb and bill gover jim and joy perry hansen's iga bemo harris bank jim and joanne collins If you would like to support Tiny Tent Show, there are many ways you can do so. Like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or visit www.bigtop.org or www.bigtop.org forward slash tiny tent show. And there you will find GoFundMe and other donation links. Again, a huge thank you to the folks who have already pitched in to support us. We noticed that and we're grateful. So it's time to say goodbye, except around here, as you know, uh, we never say goodbye. We just say, well, I suppose. Mm -hmm.